Okay, so let's uh, talk more about the distributions of a sample mean. And I thought that the best way to make this thing a little more clear would be to go through some sample problems because I, I can never get this into my head unless I actually see it in action. So these two problems we're going to do I got from a book called Biostatistics, 8th edition, A Foundation for Analysis in the Health Sciences by Wayne W. Daniel. It's a pretty good book, but probably a little bit too more, more detailed than we need for this. Anyway, so here is the problem. The mean and standard deviation of serum iron values in healthy men, like this guy over here, is 120 and 15. And we want to know what is the probability that a random sample of 50 normal men will have a mean between 150 and 125. So the first thing I like to do in these uh, problems is to kind of write down what I know. And so we, we know here the population parameters. We know the population mean and the population standard deviation. In reality, this is very difficult to know, but in this particular scenario, we know it. So you know what? Let's, let's put that down here. Now, this may or may not be a, a normal distribution. This is our population. And we know that there's going to be a mean in here somewhere, and we represent that by mu. And that mean, we already said, was 120. 120. And we also know that the standard deviation, which is sigma, is equal to 15. So we got these population parameters. So what else do we know? We also know that we're going to be taking a sample of 50 normal men, a random sample, and we want to know what, if the, what would be the probability that the mean is between these numbers. So let's draw that out. So we'll be taking a random sample from our population, and we'll take uh, 50 uh, normal men in that random sample. And we're asking the question now, what is the probability that the mean of this sample is between 115 and 125? So now let's make a sample distribution uh, with sample sizes of n equals 50. And we know a few things about this because of the, from the central limit theorem, namely that uh, this will be a normal distribution, that the mean of this thing will be equal to mu, that is, that the mean of this distribution is equal to the population mean. And we also know that the standard error, also known as the standard error of the sample distribution, which is the standard error of this little thing here, is going to be equal to this thing divided by the square root of this thing. So, we have these formulas here then. So, the standard error is equal to the the population parameter standard deviation divided by the sample mean square rooted. All right, and you know what? We happen to know all of these numbers, right? So that's great. And so what do we want to know? We wanted to know what is the probability that the sample mean is going to be between these numbers here. And look, we have a distribution of these sample means here. So we really want to know what is the probability that the sample mean is going to be in this area that I'm about to draw. So here, one between 115 and 125, we want to know whether that the sample mean is in between here. And remember, this population is nothing but sample means of, from coming from populations of sample size 50. So this is easy. Now we can do this because this is a normal distribution. We know these two values here. Now it just becomes a simple z-score problem. So let's go do that. So let's calculate these things that we know of this. We already know is going to be 120. And then the standard error is going to be uh, 15 over the square root of 50. And that number is about um, 2.12. I guess I did that math in my head because I'm just that smart. No, I actually used the calculator, and so could you. Uh, but that's what it is. It's 2.12. So now we know these values here. We've got this, our standard error, and we've got our mean. We've got those numbers here. We've got ourselves a z-score problem. Let's go to it. So let's calculate the z-score of the first one. Now, if you'll remember, the z-score is calculated by taking the value, and so we'll just call that x for right now. You subtract off the mean here, and in this case, the mean we got here, right? And you divide it by the standard deviation, and we got that here. 
right? And now we have two numbers that we want to plug in here. We want to plug in 115 and 125. And that's what I did here. So z equals 115, right? That's the first value that we had. And we want to plug in this mu here, and that's 120. And our standard error was 2.12. So we have 115 minus 120, which equals negative 5, over 2.2 which equals approximately, I'm going to say, negative 2.36, 2.36, all right? And now the other one, we've got 125 minus, again, 120, which is our uh, mean of the sampling distribution, divided by the standard error, which is 2.12, so 5 divided by 2.12, well, that's going to be positive 2.36, so I'll have to squeeze that in over here, 2.36. So now what we have is a different question altogether. And I'm going to take it to another spot, and we're going to, we're going to look at that. Okay, so basically I'm, we're on a new page here that has this table on it, which we're going to use. And what I'm showing you here is our previous sampling distribution of the standard mean, and we said we wanted it to be between 115 and 125. And we've converted this. Uh, into z-scores and so what that looks like now is a new question that we're asking so now we're asking between we want the z-score to between be between negative 2.36 and 2.36 all right and that's easy we can do that using our uh, z-table right here so this is our z-table and as you've seen this in a previous video so this shows you kind of what you're doing it has the z-score here and then this Dark entry here means the percentage of this curve or the probability of being under this part of the curve. And so we know that in order to, we, we take the z-score, we can get it up to two decimal places. So we have negative 2.36 over here. And so we find negative uh, 2.3 over here, right? And then we know it's uh, 0.6. So we go over here to 0.6. And then let's kind of shoot all the way across and then shoot down. And so that gets us this value here, 0 0.0091. So what I've drawn over here is this portion of the curve up till here is 0 0.0091. Now that's not what we want. We don't want it being less than negative 2.36. We want it being between these two, between po negative 2.36 and positive 2.36. So the next thing we got to do is figure out what is this whole area here? And so we can't do that here because these are all the negative values. So let's go to the second page of this. Okay, and so now here we have all the positive values here for our z-table. And you can see uh, they, they even drew this graph here to make it look nicer. And so now we want to find um, positive 2.36. So there's 2.3 and 6. And so let's kind of shoot all the way across like that and then all the way down like that, and we say, aha, there it is. It's 0 0.9909. So the area under this portion of the curve here is 0 0.9909. Now, if you remember, the whole curve is, has an area of 1, so this is about 99% of it, uh, a little bit more, actually. All right, let's move back to our init initial picture there. So I've drawn that. Here, 0 0.9909, and that's up to positive 2.36. Now, we really just want whatever is in between these two values here. So, what would that be? That, well, that would be all of this dark blue area subtracting off this light blue area. And then that would get us exactly what we wanted, which is negative 2.3, between negative 2.36 and 2.36. So, we have just this area of the curve. So, we're going to subtract from the dark blue area the light blue area, meaning we're going to subtract neg uh, subtract 99.09 .09 minus 0, 0 0.91. And the answer to this is 0 0.9818, or 98%. And so that is the, is the area here that is in between these two values here. All right, and so what does this really mean? Let's go back to the first picture again. Oh, actually, we have it up here. So that means 98% is in between here, 98%. And so what you can say now, you can make the claim that if you have a, uh, 
a mean with uh, a sample size of 50, and we, and we know uh, with these, these values that we had previously, uh, there's a 98% chance that it's going to be in between 115 and 125. So coming back here, we know that this is about 98%, right? 98.18%. So to answer the question that we were initially posed is, what is the probability that a random sample of 50 normal men will have a mean between 115 and 125? The answer is 98.18%. That's it. And that's uh, how we do it. I Watch this a couple times if you need to, and uh, ask me any questions if you need to. But I'm going to go over another problem as well so that we can kind of get this thing nailed down. Okay, thanks, bye.